welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which we're going to look at the issue of motion tracking. Now I've got this man moving over here and he's moving from one side to the other as he moves close to the woman and then zooms off in the opposite direction. And what we've got is a little mark on his face where he's had a shaving cut which we've done a little bit of work in a previous tutorial on removing spots and blemishes. And what I want to do is track this spot so that I can add something to it. If I wanted to, I could even add a, a plaster or whatever you want to add to it. But I just want to show you how to do tracking with a particular item. But firstly, it's worth saying that with After Effects, you have two tracking options. There is the inbuilt tracker, which I'm going to demonstrate today. But there's also a tracker that ships, a separate program entirely that ships with After Effects. It's free of charge, you don't have to pay for it. You'll find it in your root After Effects folder and it's called Mocha for After Effects, Mocha for AE. And there are even options, I'm in CS6 here, where you can see you've got Paste Mocha Camera, Paste Mocha Mask. Mocha is more than just motion tracking, you can do an awful lot of bits and pieces with Mocha. I'm not going to cover Mocha, but it's worth saying that there is another option if you wish to do that. But we're going to look at the Point Tracker in After Effects. And the Point Tracker does basically what it says, it just takes a single point and tracks it along. Now, before we use the point tracker, one of the things we need to think about is how are we going to use that data? So, what we want to do is track this spot as it moves, as he moves, and then we can add a piece of text, which is what we'll do for demonstration purposes. And we need to think about how we can make something then follow when we've done the track. And to do that, what we need to do is create a target for the track. So we track the video footage, but we also need to target or put that data into another layer that can then lock on to the actual area that we've targeted, the area that we've tracked, and can then be used to parent whatever we want to include with this track. Sometimes I call this a data bucket. We're going to be creating a lot of data when we track, and we need to put that data into a bucket, and that bucket, if you like, is a new layer, and the layer is called a null object and a null object is a non-rendering layer. So it's a layer you can use for motion tracking, for camera tracking, for moving cameras around, for all sorts of bits and pieces. But what we're going to use it for is holding or storing this tracking data and then the null object will, if you like, follow this spot as we've done our motion track and we can then parent whatever items we want to that null object. So let's create a new null object. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, Null object, and you can see it's got a keyboard shortcut. Control Alt Shift Y for a PC, Command Option Shift Y for a Mac. You create it, and usually in my own work, I would rename this TD for tracking data or call it tracking data. And you just hit enter, rename it, and hit enter again. But I'm not going to rename it just so you can see how I use it a bit later on. Now, what we need is the tracking panel or the tracker, and that's found in one of two ways. One is you could go to your workspaces and you can choose a motion tracking and that will bring the panel to the fore. The other alternative is you simply go to the Windows menu and you look for the tracker and make sure you select the tracker and then the tracker panel opens up down here. Now at the moment it's not active and it's not active simply because I don't have the actual layer selected. I've got, I've got a null layer selected. And in actual fact I'm just going to move this panel up to here so that you can see my whole timeline. So there's the tracker. Let me just rearrange it a bit. And as you can see, nothing is active, but as soon as I go to either select the source here or just click on the actual layer here in the timeline, you'll see that it comes to life. Now there is a camera tracker, there's a track camera, there's a warp stabilizer and the stabilizing motion. There's lots of other bits and pieces which I'm not covering in this tutorial. I'm interested in this one which says track motion. Now when you click track motion, you will open up the layer panel because as with paint you can't actually track in the composition window so I'm going to click track motion and you can see at once the layer panel has opened up I'm going to pull this down a bit so we can get a closer look and in actual fact I'm going to zoom in a bit so that we can actually see what's going on now what we've got here is a little box in fact I'm going to zoom into that box so you can see that more clearly Okay, so this box has got three items. It's called track point one, it's got an outer box, an inner box, and a point. If you are going to track more than just a single point, so if it's more than just the position that's changing, say somebody's hand holding a camera and it's going side to side rather, then you would add a second point, and that's added over here by clicking rotation. 
so you can actually track an item as it rotates slightly and if the camera is going in and out you can see that you can also add scale in as well so if we look down here on our track panel first of all we can see that we're on the close contact layer which is the name of the video we've got tracker 1 which is the only option we've got and you can see that we are going to use a track type which is transform there are other types available but transforms what we want to use for the basic tracker right so now we need to understand this box the middle point here is the application point and if you hover over it you'll see that you'll get a different kind of icon for moving it around you get four points and it's like four white lines or a white box in the middle to be able to click and drag that item around this is where the tracking point is applied now it doesn't matter if you move it because we're actually going to be parenting the end result so if this happens to be in the wrong place you've grabbed it and move it by accident don't worry about it but just know that when you're over this particular box and you want to move the whole box you want the black arrows and the black lines not the smaller black arrows and the white lines so just be aware of that and try and keep it in the middle if you can but honestly if you move this point it really doesn't matter too much what does matter is this inner box and this is called the feature region I'm just going to zoom out slightly so we can actually see our man and I'm going to click with the four black lines and you'll see that when you click and drag it magnifies and then I'm going to drag it across until I get to the thing that I'm actually interested in tracking which is just there sorry that it's not particularly pleasant to look at when it's magnified let go and now I'm actually going to zoom in so we can see what's going on so this is the feature region this is the box that you put around the actual feature and you can see that I've actually lost my application point anyway which is fine so what we've done is we've put this around the feature that we're tracking now the important thing about the feature is that it has to have good contrast between the pixels all around it and as you can see this particular razor cut shaving cut has now given a scab which has given us a fairly good contrast between the pixels that are all around so we can just set that so that it's nicely actually on the item itself get it nice and close because this is the area that's being tracked this outer box is now the search area and each new frame this outer box is going to be looking for this point having moved so that it can then move the feature region over it as it's moved so this is searching for this item every frame that we move on and you don't want this track box or this search box to be too big if you can help it and one way of seeing is to actually use the page down button or the page up button and just go up and down a frame and see how much it moves for each frame you move and you can see that's not moving a great deal so I don't need to have a massive search box however when I move a bit further on in time and I go further on over here suddenly he does a great very quick twist which means actually at that point I would need quite a big search region because he's going to move very quickly so if I was over him say just there let's just move it to that point so put it over here there we go you can see my application points got lost over here as well so let's just click and move that application point back to the middle there we go not that it matters but do that so let's just make sure that we've zoomed in using my middle mouse wheel so that we're about the right point here so if we start doing page down now you can see that initially it's going to be okay for one frame but look at the next frame it's moving a long way so what we might say is at this point because he's going to be moving fairly fast fairly quickly I'm actually going to make this a bigger search region because there is fast movement on my track from that point onwards now I'm not at the beginning and I'm not at the end of my timeline but that doesn't matter with tracking I'm going to zoom out a little because you can actually track forwards and backwards and these are the tools down here firstly you can see that the motion target says null one which is this layer here what that means is when we have created all the data and we apply it it's very important that we click apply all the data is going to go to that null object so now we're ready to actually do some tracking and in the next tutorial we'll do the track and we will correct the problems that we're going to face